Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings we do have wind and rain warnings issued for tonight into tomorrow as we're going to see quite a vigorous area of low pressure coming up from the south. We'll then have a look at the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as this is remaining fairly unsettled through the next couple of days into the weekend before it does look likely perhaps into next week we'll start to see some higher pressure build and that is the theme as we head into early April as we'll see in the GFS, GM, ECMWF and the ensembles is for higher pressure to take more of an influence. We are flirting with the idea of cooler and warmer high pressure systems which the models still haven't quite made their mind up yesterday very much more on the side of cooler ensemble members and operational runs today perhaps all flipping slightly milder so we'll have to see exactly what the high pressure does have in store what sort of air mass will be trapped underneath it but there is still a lot of uncertainty at this stage very subtle differences in, in that upper air mass can uh, make uh, big big changes at the surface from conditions perhaps 9 or 10 degrees with frosts to perhaps as high as 18 19 20 degrees with some really warm sunshine out there so we'll have to see what is in store for early april so do remember if you enjoy my videos which do like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so do start on the live radar at the moment you can see we've got a lot of heavier showers pushing through at the moment as we are in between low pressure systems but we are still under general low pressure influence so we've got a lot of pop-up showers developing and you can see where the wind direction is you can see the line where all these showers are lining up is from the southwest to northeast and you can see most of these are sort of light to moderate but through this afternoon we're likely to see some heavier pulses develop you see up towards the northwest here a couple down towards the london area and to the southwest where we see some brighter colors appearing which are sort of heavy thundery showers starting to break out and those as I said will become more widespread through the afternoon as we do progress uh, later uh, before that low pressure system does arrive so it, could be, it will be very hit and miss some areas could see some big big heavy showers throughout the rest of the day other areas could avoid it best areas at the moment look far east of england up towards the far north and up towards scotland and parts of the republic of ireland and northern ireland where there are still showers around but not quite as heavy now of course one advantage of a southwesterly wind uh, is that it's pretty mild as of midday pretty much all areas are into the yellows again indicating those temperatures up towards the low to maybe even mid teens in places so really quite pleasant and warm if you do see that sunshine however with the cloud and the rain and some gustier winds appearing it won't feel all too warm it's one of those days where you get the rain it won't feel all too nice you see a bit of sunshine it'll feel pretty present and warm out there and if you look at the weather warnings we do have these lower areas of low pressure coming from the south um, and you can see we've got a wind warning and a rain warning issued in places now we've got a wind warning issued from 9 p.m tonight until midday tomorrow strong winds may affect parts of southern england and southern wales during thursday evening and friday morning Again, if we look at the further details, you can see 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts across coastal areas with a low probability of 70 miles per hour over exposed, exposed hills and headlands with winds probably peaking after they veer west to northwesterly. As I said, this could lead to some disruption and along with stronger winds, we'll see some heavier rain, which will clear as the low progresses eastwards. It could actually linger in a few spots, as we'll see on the UK in a minute, perhaps across parts of the Midlands and Wales. It could linger all the way into Saturday. So some areas will have quite a miserable 24 to 36 hours. Again, high likelihood, lower end of the impact, so no real chances of this becoming an amber warning, but still could be some quite disruptive winds along that far south coast through tonight into tomorrow. Now we've got this yellow rain warning issued from 6am tomorrow until 6pm tomorrow, again 15 to 25 millimetres quite widely across Devon and Cornwall and these are likely to bring areas of standing water and the chance of some flooding on Friday and it will slowly e ease in this area during Friday evening and high likelihood lower end of the impact so no real chance of any amber warning with this. Now if we do go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days you can see all these showers breaking out through the rest of this afternoon could be quite thundery in places and could line up but of course it will be hit and miss best way to tell if you're going to see precipitation on your way is to keep an eye on the live radar 
Through this evening, you can see that heavier band of precipitation moving up from the southwest with some quite bright colours in it as well, so some torrential rain in places for it sort of pivots through England and Wales, again giving a lot of rain in places for slowly clearing through the morning with the heaviest rain along the south coast. As it does clear, we've got a bit of a lingering weather front, as I said, through Friday into Saturday, could linger across parts of southwest England, into Wales, and then progressively into the Midlands through Saturday as well, just lingering through most of the day. Really not particularly nice for clearing into Sunday, where it should give way to sunshine with a few showers in places. And then into next week, we do see more weather fronts trying to push in. But look how unsuccessful this low and this weather front is at pushing in. It does disintegrate as it does, and that's because higher pressure is starting to take more of an influence. And you can see that on the mean sea level pressure here, high pressure to our north and our east. Again, particularly pushing in cooler air masses from the east, but nevertheless, it will be drier and perhaps a little bit more pleasant. You can see those cooler air masses to our east could be pushing in. Again, uncertainty with exactly how much cold air we'll get in and the time frame of that. Now, if you do have a look at the two metre max temperatures over the next five days, you can see this afternoon perhaps peaking around 16 or 17 in the far east, where we see some sun sunshine and avoid those showers. Elsewhere will be pleasant, 15, 16 degrees, quite widely, but again, will be very much dependent on the, uh, on, the, on the sunshine and those showers for what it will actually feel like out there. Overnight temperature is not too bad, sort of 9 to 11 degrees, and then into tomorrow afternoon, peaking once again, 13 or 14, but with rain in places that will feel a lot cooler than that. As we head into Saturday, overnight temperature is not too bad, again, mid-tie single digits, and then into Saturday afternoon, still relatively cool with the cloud and rain lingering through central areas, so it's not going to be all too pleasant for the 1st of April, and then finally into Sunday, Temperatures still reasonably low with cooler air drifting in. And then as you head into next week, see a bit of a frost appearing there as we do see that colder air moving in. And then in the daytime, 10 to 12 degrees, not all too uh, warm at all. And then into Tuesday once again, perhaps a frost in places. And again, this is the sort of pattern if we did see those colder air masses drifting. Even here, we're not getting really cold air in, we're just getting a couple of degrees below average. If we did sort of get the minus five line in, we would see more of these frosts widely overnight and temperatures in the day struggling in the mid to high single digits so it really wouldn't be all too pleasant um, but of course we will have to see what is in store because some runs are still showing some warmer high pressure as we do head into early april now if you look at the gfs and see what that is showing over the course of the next couple of weeks and you can see the low pressure running in at the moment high pressure does make more of an influence next week potentially easterly winds developing but definitely here from the gfs more of a westerly flow. Eventually, as we head towards day 10, high pressure builds up towards the north, and it does pull in a northerly wind. Now, unfortunately, the GFS run is not going out beyond 288 hours. That is uh, quite far in the longer range, so anything beyond that is still pretty speculative. But at 288 hours, high pressure up towards the north, mid-Atlantic ridge, and a northerly wind with cold air mass taking over. You look at those uh, temperature deviation, a good six to eight degrees below average in a few spots and the potential equivalent temperature really quite cold as well so just showing you that even though these gfs run does go for more warmer high pressure systems at least initially it does have that cooler air drifting in more in the longer range so it could be a sort of pattern where we do see cooler times and milder times uh we'll just have to see what the other runs do have in store now, if you look at the GEM, see what that is showing. Again, low pressure running up from the southwest at the moment. High pressure pushing to our north, trying to put a slack easterly in. Not having too much success, but eventually does get it in towards day 10. But for, at this point, still actually has generally milder conditions over the top of us. So this would be nothing particularly warm, but nothing particularly cold either. Probably average or mid-teens likely with this. Chillier conditions if we did see that easterly flow properly coming in. Uh, again, this would have colder air there, but uh, at this stage, we don't have any cold air out towards Europe. It's all stuck still up in the Arctic. So we will have to see what happens with this sort of scenario. But again, all runs are being high pressure over the top of us, or at least nearby, but we'll have slightly different outcomes for those air masses. 
If we finish by looking at the ECMWF, low pressure running up from the southwest at the moment. High pressure, trying to build to our north, trying to pull in the easterly wind. And at day 10, actually, start to get even further northwards and could actually start to pull in cooler air from the east. But it could, once again, it's very similar to the GM, where it's not amazingly warm, not amazingly cold, sort of in between, generally average for the foreseeable future, maybe slightly above average. And again, we can't, we'll have to determine what those two meters temperatures are nearer the time. And I do finish by looking at the ensembles. These are the latest GFS ensembles from the midnight. Uh, sorry, if we look at the GFS, sorry, first, the latest GFS ensemble members for the midnight run as the six o'clock run hasn't fully come out. You can see generally average throughout the next few weeks, maybe slightly above average from around sort of the 8th to 15th of April. But once again, that's been driven by some very mild runs they're getting up towards 8 to 10 degrees at 850 HPA. Majority of runs for at least the next week or so are hovering slightly above and slightly below that average line. And the one good thing is, apart from the next couple of days and perhaps a slight blip into the middle of next week, where you see a bit more precipitation, it is looking pretty dry for the foreseeable future. But as I said, there are some cool runs here, there are some mild runs, definitely a shift to more average conditions, maybe slightly above average, but we will have to see what is in store. Again, look at the dew points over the course of the next couple of weeks. Generally still, nothing amazingly cold, so no huge southwesterly air masses or big southerly flows are likely. If we do see milder conditions, it most likely will be sort of homegrown or warmth or milder conditions, which is with some sunshine on a generally average air mass. As you see these dew points, they are still relatively cool around the low single digits for the foreseeable future. And looking at those two meters temperatures, again, looking at likely the cold, cooler or colder days around 9 or 10 degrees, and some of these milder average days up towards sort of 14, 15 degrees, and maybe in the longer range towards the middle of April. If we did see something a bit warmer up towards the 10 degree point at 50 HPA, we could see maybe 20 degrees being broken in places. And if you finish by just looking at the ECMWF ensemble members, again, very similar, generally average to maybe slightly above today, but equally there are still plenty of runs below average. Um, and we will have to see just a slight shift upwards, upwards in those ensembles since this time yesterday. Still though, as I said, plenty of cooler runs. It's not like it's gone completely out. It's just the shift has been to slightly milder conditions, uh, but nothing especially mild, generally upper air temperatures around the freezing point, which would probably give temperatures at the surface of around the low to maybe mid-teens where we do see a bit of sunshine. So nothing especially cold coming up. There is the potential for cooler or cold weather at times, but no huge signal at this stage, but equally no huge signal or anything warmer. The only big signal we've got is that it's looking likely to be turning drier and generally probably more pleasant regardless of what those temperatures will be. Like you see a lot more sunshine and pushing that cloud and rain far away, hopefully, as we head into April. A bit of a step change in terms of um, sunshine and uh, cloud and rain coming over the next few days. But we're going to go from some real heavy rain over the next few days to something a little bit brighter, sunnier and drier into next week, uh, coinciding with the start of April. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.